The only thing standing in the way of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers clinching the NFC South on Sunday nights is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We will tell you why on this crossover Thursday episode of the Locked on Bucks and Saints podcast right now. See these receipts? Keeping these receipts. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, Bucks and Saints fans, to this week's Crossover Thursday episode, and thank you for making your favorite Locked On podcast your first listen every day. I am David Harrison, one of the hosts of the Locked On Bucks podcast on Twitter at dharrison82, and I'm spending this Thursday with my favorite crossover host on the network, also my boss on the Locked On podcast network. Not that that has any influence on what I just said. Host of the Locked On Saints podcast, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola. Ross, I mean, truly, you know this because I've said it to you in atmospheres that don't provide me any sort of benefit. Um, truly one of my favorite two, my favorite two weeks of the year. And then three, if we're lucky and we get, we get a saints bucks matchup in the playoffs, the fans go crazy fan fan. Twitter has already started. I've already been engaging with a couple of saints fans oh, yeah. who are on the better side of things. You've seen some of that, that traffic. Uh, how have you been? First of all, how are you doing and, and how pumped are you for this divisional matchup? Good, man. I'm, I'm doing really well, doing really well. Glad to be able to be here to uh, dive into all of this uh, with you as always. You know, this is these are some of my favorite crossovers as well. And I love this time of year. I love this time of year. Saints and Bucks season doesn't get any better than this. I'm looking forward to this matchup big time. They're always the weird ones at Ray J, too. So I'm yeah. excited for this one more in particular. Absolutely. Of course, Saints fans. I don't even know. I don't even know what like Saints Nation is. It Saint, it's who that nation, Houdat right? Nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There mm-hmm. you go. Who that nation? I'm about. To, I'm going to get added for for that for not remembering. Yeah, there that. you go. So Who that nation? Dug your of ditch, course, my friend. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, firmly claims that this is not a rivalry game. The Buccaneers are not the Saints' rivals. However, promptly on Monday, I started seeing a lot of Saints chatter about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But let's chat about something else. Let's chat about storylines, Ross. What is going down in Nola that that Bucks fans need to know about the most? Yeah, look, I I think the biggest storyline going down in New Orleans right now is still centering around health and what the New Orleans Saints can do now that the team is getting a little bit healthier. The last time that these two teams played, it was a vastly different team, right? I mean, you had uh, Jameis Winston at quarterback. You had Adam Troutman was still out there, had probably his best game up against Tampa. And both of those players, unfortunately, injured in that game. Adam Troutman was designated to return on injured reserve on Wednesday, so there's a chance that he could be back for this one. But, of course, Jameis... Jameis Winston, his season is over. The Saints went to Trevor Simeon for the rest of that game. This game, they're going to start and hopefully finish with Taysom Hill at quarterback. So that's been the the, the big sort of scuttlebutt so far around the New Orleans Saints, if you will, has been how this team is performing with Taysom Hill as opposed to Trevor Simeon. And of course, the big return of Alvin Kamara last week certainly uh, made its waves as well. Absolutely. And I think for the Buccaneers, you mentioned health. I think that's got to be a storyline for really every team in December, uh, especially teams looking for playoff seeding and and the New Orleans Saints, thanks to a, a kind of a top heavy NFC this year, right? The six and seven teams and all that, they're all still very much in contention for a playoff spot. And and the team holding the seventh spot right now, the watch football team, uh, may not be holding it very much longer thanks to COVID and some other things. Uh, but I think for the Buccaneers outside of health, I think the biggest storyline has to be can the Buccaneers finally put down Big Brother? And let's just, you know, let's just put it out there. This is gonna make me uh this is gonna make some Saints fans happy with what I'm about to say. It probably makes the Bucs fans upset with what I'm about to say. But bottom line is, I mean, the New Orleans Saints have been big brother to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for some time now, and I'm not even talking total series record or anything like that. Uh, but for one, the New Orleans Saints are winners of the six of, of the last seven matchups. Ten of the last 15 have won the last six straight regular season contests. And uh, in this divisional matchup, Ross, only one team has ever swept the other three straight seasons. That was New Orleans Saints a little while ago. If they win this weekend, it'll it'll be at the New Orleans Saints again yep. for the second time in this <laughs> series history. Yeah, so we swept them in 19, swept, swept them in 20, uh, and then of course won the, the week eight regular season matchup to, against the Bucks, 36 uh, 27. But here's some here's some interesting things, and these are all anecdotal, right? Obviously, have nothing to do really with uh, the game and with what co- head coach Kevin James is going to do with this Saints <laughs> squad on the field. Um, but the, <laughs> the the New or- the, the New Orleans Saints haven't lost in Tampa since New Year's Eve of 2017. I thought that was that was very interesting. But that win in December, December 31st of, of 2017, is the only time in the last three matchups that New Orleans has actually won in Tampa in the month of December. So right. 
Again, anecdotal, right, uh, and all that, but still, still very good. So a little bit of good and bad, right, from both sides of the conversation. So I might get some hate from both sides of the, of the fan base here, and that's fine. Last time we met, Ross, and, 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 I, and I did dive into the YouTube comments over the Locked on Saints uh, YouTube page. So for Saints fans commenting about how much they love my analysis, I did read those comments, and I will be reading them again. And a lot of those centered around my criticism of Jameis Winston at the time, obviously got injured. Nobody is celebrating that. So I do want to apologize, Saints fans, Ross, for criticizing Jameis Winston as much as I did. And I know it struck a nerve. And I, and I promise that this time around, I'm not going to criticize the New Orleans Saints quarterback situation. But let's mm-hmm. let's be honest. Taysom Hill as the number one quarterback, the main primary, not the best option. I'm not criticizing. Just just pointing out facts. No, of course. On a scale of one to ten, though, one being average Taysom Hill. So it's it's one on the bad scale uh, and ten uh-huh. being average Taysom Hill on the 10 scale. So basically on a scale of one to 10 Taysom Hill to Taysom Hill, how bad is it that Taysom Hill is your starting quarterback? <laughs> Here is the way that I would look at it. I think that based upon what the uh, options are that are available, which are a rookie that's ever played in the NFL and who's been inactive all season. And there's probably a reason for that. And Trevor Simeon, who lost four straight games and who did come in and have a nice game in relief of Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston was performing well against Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. Then he got injured. And then Trevor Simeon went out there and kind of, you know, thrashed the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, which was a bit of a surprise to us all. But I, I think that when you look at what Taysom Hill brings in comparison to the other two options, he's your best option without a doubt because he gives yeah. you an extra dynamic. He gives you an extra dimension in his ability to run. And we saw Tampa really struggle with that with Josh Allen last week. And certainly that's something that like, if we're noticing it, then certainly the Saints coaching staff is noticing it. And so that they'll very likely try to attack. So I guess I would go in terms of one Taysom Hill to 10 Taysom Hill. I'll take 10 Taysom Hill in that situation because of the fact that in terms of what's available to you and Jameis Winston no longer being an option, he's really your best option that you can put on the field right now. Right. Better than Simeon, definitely better than Ian Book. You don't want to throw Ian Book out there in this situation against this team for his first. Yeah, 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 Yeah. for sure. Unless you're a Notre Dame fan, you don't, nobody, nobody wants to see that. Speaking of Taysom Hill, Taysom had a nice game up against the New York Jets, but it was really a day led by Alvin Kamara. And of course, both of those guys have the ability to set up the New Orleans Saints for a little bit of an upset in Tampa. We're going to talk about that matchup and more matchups to keep an eye out on as we continue this crossover edition. David Harrison, Locked on Bucks, myself, Ross Jackson of Locked on Saints as we continue on with this crossover. But before we get to that, I want to tell you about our friends over at Stat Hero. Listen, uh, David, I don't know about you, but I kind of fall off on the season long um, uh, fantasy football thing. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of figure around week eight or so if I'm really going to be in contention or not. And then I kind of fall out. So what I really like is weekly fantasy football. And I like exactly what it is that Stat Hero has set up because they are a one of a kind setup when it comes to daily fantasy football and daily fantasy platforms because you can actually select the lineup that you're going to choose to go up against and build your lineup to contend with that. For instance, right now you can go in and you can select one of these uh, really special ones that they do to where you pick like three quarterbacks or you pick by the uh, by the position basically, mm-hmm. and from that you can end up picking like three QB only lineup. Like right now they have Matt Safford, Tom Brady. Brady, as well as Jimmy Garoppolo. So you can build a lineup of three quarterbacks set to take on that specific lineup, which I think is a lot of fun. And it makes everything just a little bit more fun where you can rotate a bunch of stuff like that. And you know what you're going up against, as opposed to some of those other daily fantasy deals where everything's kind of invisible. There's no transparency. You're kind of just going up against stat sheet heroes. So with that being the case, I really, really stress that you should check out Stat Hero for all of your daily fantasy needs because they are a ton of fun. And you can sign up for free right now by heading over to Stat Hero dot com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on L O C K E D O N so you can get a one hundred percent deposit match on your first deposit. That is stathero.com slash locked on with promo code locked on for that one hundred percent match. Once again stathero.com slash locked on promo code locked on terms and conditions apply. Segment two now here on crossover Thursday Bucks and Saints getting ready to match off match up this weekend. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers trying to clinch the NFC South division and the New Orleans Saints try to make sure they don't do it on their watch. Thank you for making your favorite locked on podcast show your first listen or watch. If you're on YouTube every single day, of course, we're free. We're available on all platforms. Ross Jackson and David Harrison back now to talk key matchups, Ross. And for the Buccaneers, we talked a lot about Taysom Hill. Mm -hmm. Yes, I cracked a joke about Taysom Hill. I'm sorry. It's my nature. It's all in fun. 
do with it as we're you having know. a good time. We're doing we're having a good time. <laughs> and then of course, Alvin Kamara, right? The easily one of the best running backs in the in the NFL, if he's not the best running back in the NFL when he's healthy. And that's all. And of course, that has been part of the problem this year for the for the New Orleans Saints offense. But he's he's healthy, right? He should be in this game. Uh, so what I'm looking for from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense going against Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara is stop these two or contain these two as organically as possible. The more that Tom Brady or Tom Brady, Todd Bowles, the Buccaneers defensive coordinator, everything's about to, Tom Brady, about you Tom. guys. The more Tom has to come into the box and line up <laughs> over the nose. Yeah, <laughs> please put Tom Brady on defense. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. The more that Todd Bowles has to bring anybody in the box, whether it be Antoine Winfield Jr. or you know a backup safety of Jordan Whitehead yeah. uh, doesn't get to play in this one, which he was back at practice, but we'll see how that calf injury really holds up. Uh, during the week, the more that Todd Bowles has to bring up to stop Taysom Hill or to stop Alvin Kamara out of the secondary, the more likely it is that Taysom Hill, you know, look, Bucks fans are going to say, oh, you got lucky or whatever and, and all these things. But Taysom Hill finds an avenue or finds a slot. And listen, some of these wide receivers, even though they haven't had the greatest season or production uh, in, in, you know, for the Saints this year, things can happen, right? Any given Sunday right. and all those things. What I found interesting, Ross, is that Taysom Hill in his career against the Buccaneers, because I feel like there's been much more Taysom Hill in, in Buccaneers games than what apparently there actually has been. In his career against the Buccaneers, four for four for 104 yards. Now, don't get me wrong, 104 yards on four passes is pretty good, but four for four. Like, I really, I had to check. I was, I was using pro football reference. Uh-huh. I checked that number like five different times. It's like, there's no way Taysom Hill only has four pass attempts against the Buccaneers. But I mean, here we stand. And I think that is my first key matchup I'm looking at in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And and that makes a ton of sense. I mean, even from the New Orleans Saints side to highlight that same matchup, because you're right, if you end up getting to a point where you're having to like dedicate some of these additional players around and run support and things like that, then it gives Sean Payton the opportunity to be able to scheme something up to specifically attack that. And Sean Payton, just just to help support your point here, Sean Payton mentioned on Wednesday when he, in, in his conversation with media that he feels like the Saints can have a good passing day against Tampa Bay based upon what they do. Uh, based on what they do defensively, because they're a heavy zone team, play a lot of cover three, cover two quarters, those types of, 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 of deep coverages. And so for New Orleans, they're really good at scheming against zone. And now if you're starting to pull players out of that or you're forcing that team to play something it doesn't play a ton, which would be in this case man coverage, even though that used to be really be kind of the identity of Tampa. Right. This point, you're forcing them to do something they'd be uncomfortable with. And then all of a sudden you get, you know, receivers running away from defenders and uh, in man to man, you get defenders turning their backs to Taysom Hill, which would be a good opportunity for Taysom and the Saints offense to pick up some yards on the ground that way, too. So yep. there's a way for them to be able to attack both of these things. But in order for them to be able to attack all of those things and find a way to keep it comfortable, it means that they have to get the run game going. But they can't get the run game going if Tampa's scoring a ton of points over on yep. the other side. You look at Tampa right now, they are the team that has been run against the least in the NFL. They've also allowed the third fewest rushing yardage but they're allowing over four yards per carry they're 21st in the nfl when it comes to yards per carry so the saints have to be able to run the ball here and on a per carry basis tampa's not the strongest against the run however you can't run against them very much because you're usually chasing them they've scored 30 points in every home game so far this season and so with all of that in order for the saints to keep that limited you're going to be relying on the defense to shut down some of what the passing game is going to be for the tampa bay bucks you're pretty confident if you're a saints fan watching this game in terms of run defense for new orleans been pretty confident about that but in the passing game and we get back to the big matchup Marshawn Lattimore Mike Evans we get it again and so I think that that ends up setting the tone that matchup for what the defense does as a whole in the passing game yeah absolutely I think I think you're 100% right in there and I like really kind of what you mentioned about playing zone versus man coverage I think a lot of times fans uh, and, and you know people who watch the game uh, for for just the love of watching the game kind of get confused sometimes like man you know those receivers don't match up against our secondary why are you playing so much zone and I think a lot of times people forget how much a mobile quarterback and, mm-hmm. and, a, and a versatile running back out of the backfield can really impact how you play defense against the pass, even in the deeper part of the secondaries. Like you don't want Antoine Winfield Jr. running with his back towards the line of scrimmage, covering a deep receiver in man coverage when Taysom Hill is trying to scramble out of the pocket or Alvin right. Kamara is catching a dump pass. So again, that those things all kind of that third level of defense is impacted by what's happening behind the line of scrimmage for for an offense like the New Orleans Saints. So I, so I like how you pointed that out because that's exactly something that Sean Payton obviously is going to look to do. And, and we flip that over now to the Buccaneer side of things and the running game there and the usage of Leonard Fournette. And I've kind of switched up my, the way I talk about this and stopped saying running game and tried to go more to running back usage. So then when you look at the stats, right, the Buccaneers 
not one of the better running games in the NFL. I think they ranked 25th coming into the week uh, in total running, like 21 or 91 yards or something like that, uh, rushing yards per game, something like that in the NFL. Not very good. But then when you look at Leonard Fournette, he's out, he's coming off of three straight games where he's had over 100 or over 92 yards of offensive contributions. You have mm-hmm. to look at what the running back and Saints fans and, and you obviously covering Alvin Kamara know this all too well. You can't just look at the rushing stats and say, oh, well, this this team doesn't do anything with the running game because as soon as you think your team can back off the line of scrimmage a little bit, play a little bit of a shell, play some umbrella coverage and keep the offense in front of them. Leonard Fournette's going to rip off 80 receiving yards on your defense. So you're going to go, hey, right. what happened? I thought their running back wasn't very good. Leonard Fournette has been very effective against the Saints defense, against Saints rush defense, and against those linebackers. Leonard Fournette has to continue being effective. I think last time these two teams played, we saw a motion really get the best uh, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Leonard yeah. Fournette was a part of that situation. I think Leonard has to come into this game more focused, ready to be – I don't know what you want to call him. Division clinching Lenny. It doesn't really have the same ring to it. It doesn't have the same as like playoff yeah. Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a better title to carry. And I think mm-hmm. of Leonard Fournette, as much as Tom Brady is a cerebral part of this game, I think if Leonard Fournette comes in with his mindset right, executing through the catch, executing on his run after catch and everything that he can get from the Saints defense, that gives the Buccaneers offense the best chance they could have at doing exactly what you just said. Put points on the board early. It's easy to say. Well, you need to score more. Like we're Matt Millen, you know, on NBC Sports. Like, <laughs> you need to score more points than your opponent. But when you score early, that's kind of the key factor. Yeah. Your scoring early is going to be huge. And if the Buccaneers can do that, I think what happened against the Buffalo Bills last weekend will actually help them this weekend. Definitely not come out in the second half sleeping against the Saints. Yeah, absolutely. And look, the a big part of that is going to be the Saints making tackles at the catch point. If they're going to go and continue to play, I mean, they played heavily in zone and the teams that Tampa hasn't has either lost to or hasn't scored 30 points against have played heavily zone over on the defensive side with the exception of the the Patriots game, but that's, you know, the best defensive coach in the NFL and in in, in in Bill Belichick. He's so all right. He's pretty that good. yeah, so like, you know, you, you kind of just let that be what it is. He's no but, Kevin James. He's no Kevin know. James though, you know what I'm saying? He might be like a Ryan Reynolds, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but you know for the Saints I mean like a big part of it is going to be like if they're going to play that heavy zone then they have to not allow the yards after catch and so making tackles at the catch point is going to be huge the last one that I'll reference here and I'll kind of go through this quickly is just going to be Tampa Bay's defensive lineup against the Saints offensive line mm-hmm. right now Ryan Ramchek did not participate in practice on Wednesday the hope is maybe to get him back before this game that's not a great start <laughs> to yeah. that so hopefully he's able to get back out on the practice field at some point there was a couple of weeks ago to where Toronto Armstead didn't participate all week but then was questionable going into the game so it's possible still that Ryan Ramchick could come in and be limited or full for the next couple of days so you're going to be paying attention to that on both sides for Saints fans and Bucks fans and I think that matchup is going to be huge because in order for Taysom Hill to really be able to do anything in the passing game they've really condensed it down to within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage in that last game against New York you're going to want to maybe expand it a little bit in this one and then try to get some yards after catch catching players in stride but you're going to need time in order for all of that to happen so the Saints offensive line is going to have to hold up both in the passing game to create that and in the run game in order to be able to generate those opportunities that they can get with Alvin Kamara and Taysom Hill and maybe Mark Ingram if he gets back yeah, plus, I mean, no no backup offensive tackle wants to go up against a guy like Indomitian and Sue, Shaquille Barrett, yeah. Jason Pierre-Paul trying to get after Taysom Hill, of all people. Yeah. So, yeah, good. it would be very important for the Saints to get Ryan Ramchuk back. And any NFL, any football purist should want the Saints at their best because, you know, leave no excuses and all those things and, and, and all that. So, yeah. uh, of course, in this matchup, the Buccaneers are a hard 10.5-point favorite. Uh, Ross and I may not be so comfortable with those odds. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, and we're definitely not as comfortable as with those odds as we are in our socks, which might sound weird, but our socks are from Stance, an apparel company providing super soft, entirely unique clothing items that are fun to wear. And they just launched a new line of active apparel, perfect for your holiday gifting behaviors. I own some of their socks and I'll tell you, I love the unique and licensed designs and feel the feel of the socks themselves are also next level. Founded in 2009, Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks, underwear, and active apparel because everything you wear should be a direct extension of who you are and how you feel. I was actually wearing a pair of stance socks. The first time I got to meet the great Ross Jackson, we were in mobile Alabama at the 2021 senior bowl. I noticed that rocks Ross was wearing some, I call them funny socks. That's just what I call them. I too wear funny socks since I retired from the army. It's like my way of recapturing my identity. So of course I had to show them off and stance did me proud on that day. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in that those who feel good, do good, go see for yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use the promo code locked on at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. 
Those odds I just mentioned brought to you as well as the show brought to you in part by betonline.ag who has you covered all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as we get towards the NFL playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all your sports action this season. So head over to that updated website, either on your desktop device or your mobile device. Sign up today and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit just by using the promo code Locked on. Bet online loves you. They love us. You listen to this show, you get 50% on your welcome bonus just by using that promo code. Whether you're looking for basketball action, football, hockey, boxing, UFC, or your favorite Vegas casino games, I like blackjack. Don't wait. Take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2021 before they disappear. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Wrapping up this crossover Thursday episode, Ross Jackson and David Harrison locked on Saints, locked on Bucks. Find Ross at Ross Jackson Nola. Find me at D Harrison82. Find both of our shows on any audio platform and, of course, on YouTube as well. We thank you for joining us. We mentioned before the last break uh, the betting odds here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in favor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that is, by 10 and a half points. Ross, you've already put money on this line, and you yeah. put money on this line when it was at 11. I did. And I have a feeling more people put money on that line when it was at 11. <laughs> which is why it's now That's at right. 10 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly right. Yeah, I, I, I went ahead and jumped on that way quick. You don't get to see, you don't see many of those, you know, yeah. 10 plus point odds in the NFL. It's hard to beat a team by multiple scores in the right. NFL. And so I, especially a division opponent. So I definitely jumped on that one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I haven't put money on that line yet. I usually go straight money line. I like to make my picks just straight up. I, I like to try to just simplify things. You know what I mean? That's just the way I like to do things. But I will tell you right now, I will not recommend to any Bucks fan to be so brazen to take that line. I'm not even saying it couldn't necessarily happen. And, you know, I think when you look on paper, these two teams, you know, Taysom Hill doesn't match up to a Tom Brady and the defenses don't matter. And I got all those things. But it's the Saints. It's the Bucks. It's the divisional matchup. They're always weird, man. Yeah, you can't take <laughs> these things for granted. Uh, but the over-under on this thing, Ross, is 46 and a half points. So if it's 23 and a half to 23, then the Bucks and Saints will eclipse that line. How do you feel about that line? in comparison to the 10 and a half uh, point spread for the Bucks. Yeah, it's a really interesting one because you 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 don't think of this game as one that's going to be either that low scoring for Tampa or that high scoring for New Orleans depending upon mm -hmm. which side of the I guess which side of the uh the the aisle you're on, I suppose, between these two teams. And so I think that that's something that maybe stands out to different people for different reasons, but I think that it's probably right around where it should be. I mean, like that's the type of game that I'm expecting to see here. I think this is going to be close more than anything else. So I know that the line says that it's going to be wide, but the idea of it being 23, 23 and a half, 23, 24, that type of situation, I could see the Saints defense being able to create that for themselves and the Saints offense being able to find some ways to be able to put some points on the board, even if they come late. Yeah, absolutely. And then you look at, I'm looking at the, uh, the Buccaneers game, the weekly release that they like to send out. Uh, and, you know, the, the New Orleans Saints are, are scoring 23.4 points per week. The Buccaneers are scoring 31.5. So that certainly hints to taking the over uh, and all that. But then you look at the defense side of the ball. The Saints are allowing less than 22 points a game. The Bucs are allowing less than 23 points per game. Mm -hmm. So if it's a defensive matchup, uh, and again, some of those weird things that happen, a lot of times those weird things that happen are teams, one team or the other, giving away possessions. And when you give away possessions, right. you don't tend to score as much. I don't know that I would take the over on that. I think I would probably just leave that line alone. Uh, but certainly some some things to think about there. So, Ross, but let's get into how each team can win, because both these teams have a chance to win as much as you would want a 10 and three team to come in and say there's no chance a six and seven team on the outside looking into the playoff matchup in mid-December can can top this team. But we know how this works. And again, we've re referenced it a couple of times. And obviously the Saints have have been the bigger brother here in this divisional matchup. So what do the Saints have to do? Absolutely have to. No question, without a doubt, have to do in order to beat the Buccaneers this weekend. Yeah, look, I think the Saints would like to hold off Tampa as much as they can, not only for winning this game, but hey, Tampa, you know, looking to win the NFC South for the first time in a while. The Saints have 11 uh, divisional, excuse me, seven division titles. I believe Tampa's only got three. Is that right? Three? Yeah, it's three. I just wanted to make you say it too. But when it comes down to, <laughs> when it comes down to what the Saints need to do to make that happen, or at least, uh, you know, extend the process a bit for Tampa before they eventually win the division this season, uh, if they want to do that, they're going to have to be able to produce over on the offensive side. And that's going to be a big part of this. Can you produce Falvin Kamara? Can you produce a Taysom Hill? Sure. But are you also going to be able to move the ball through the air? So I think that the Saints have the tools. The Saints have what they need to be able to pull off this upset, but it's all going to come down to X. Execution. Sean Payton not at practice with the team voluntarily on Wednesday because he had a cold. He's COVID negative, but 
you know, you don't want to risk things and stuff like that. So he was being safe. And so I think that that is, is certainly something to, to keep an eye out on in terms of how that impacts the installation of this offensive game plan. So if, if they're able to get that sort of where it needs to be, then I think that they can move the ball through the air. They'll certainly be able to move the ball on the ground, I do believe, because of the extended sort of dynamic that comes with Taysom Hill outside of a traditional run game. And then, as you mentioned, the things that they do that sort of expand the run game to the short passing game. And so I think with all of that, they should be able to move the ball. But can they get into the end zone? You know, when you look at what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have given up in zone, high passer ratings, high yardage, high completion percentage, but only two touchdowns so far this season, which is pretty outstanding. And so the Saints have to not only get to a point to where they are moving the ball, but they also need to be able to get the ball into the end zone. So you're going to have to force them into red zone possessions, into red zone defense, where teams generally shift to man coverage, and then you get them to start turning their backs and all of that in the passing game, and then you get to take advantage of all that. So I think that's a big key for them over on the offensive side is that offensive efficiency and leading that to points so that there's actual value there as well, apropos a conversation we had at an earlier time. And then when it comes down to the defensive side for the Saints, the big thing is going to be you're not going to be able to confuse Tom Brady. He's seen everything, right? right? But the coverage has to hold up long enough for the pass rush to be able to get home or the pass rush has to be able to get home early enough to take him off of the spot before he's able to make any type of decisive action when it comes to passing and coverage. So I think that that becomes a big part of it is that symbiotic relationship between coverage and the pass rush. That has to be spot on and the Saints have to generate turnovers. Look for C.J. Gardner-Johnson, though, to be the guy. If they decide to blitz, if they decide to bring extra pressure, he's going to be a guy that they're going to send screaming off the line of scrimmage every now and then. Absolutely. You know, I looked up how many times the Buccaneers won the NFC South title. Uh-huh. I was like, three seems even, even for the Buccaneers, three seemed a little too, like, yeah, it was three, man. I, yeah. I, yeah. It's one of those things yeah. you block out of your memory when you cover this team. Um, you might be able to count them on Jason Pierre Paul's fingers. Oh, no. <laughs> if Bucks fans don't hit you in the comments, <laughs> the way the Saints fans hit me in the comments for going after Jameis, if Bucks fans don't retaliate, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be so very disappointed. sorry. That was so rude. That I'm gonna be rude, very. But you know what though? He laughs about it. So if he laughs, yeah, he tonight, does. That's what made me feel okay. Saying like I, I sat here, I deliberated for a second, but he cracks jokes about it. So absolutely, let's have fun. yeah, you have to be able to <laughs> laugh at yourself. Um, so that's good. That's good. So here's my key to victory, right? And and, and again, this is gonna sound very arrogant, and it sounded arrogant in the cold open. And it was by design, and I get all that, right? But let let's be honest here. And and you know what? There's a Saints fan that I actually follow on Twitter. Um, who, who literally said, who basically said, this is kind of a lose-lose for Buccaneers fans. And she's actually kind of right. Shout out to Kristen. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go, Chris. It, <laughs> if the Buccaneers win, it's like you beat the Saints with Taysom Hill, no Michael Thomas, all these problems and injuries that they've been having, maybe no Ryan Ramchek, right? That's mm-hmm. the New Orleans Saints that you beat. So, you know, round of applause, take your victory lap, congratulations. If you don't, <laughs> ugh. oh, right. buddy. Right. Oh, buddy. And honestly, if you don't beat them by at least, I don't know, seven points even, like, this is a three point game. I mean, I don't that, that victory lap might be might be a limping victory lap. So it's so it's a very interesting thing. But but what that speaks to though, right, is that the Buccaneers really have to avoid beating themselves. And honestly, I'm yeah. looking at Tom Brady, which is weird because we've seen this matchup go through with with you know Drew Brees really leading the way uh, as far as quarterbacks are concerned. I mean, through the Josh Freeman, Jameis Winston years and all that stuff, it's been Drew Brees. And I can't really remember a time outside of the divisional matchup, right? That the the Buccaneers obviously won. That's like the first time Drew Brees really was kind of a hindrance in, in a Buccaneer Saints game that I remember mm. uh, completely. And, you know, obviously the, at the end of his career and, and, all, and all that stuff. But Tom Brady was, was kind of a hindrance. Now, the 11 penalties obviously didn't help, especially the roughing the quarterback you know, penalties, the horse collar and all that stuff. Which, by the way, guys, Devin White, not a dirty player. Not a dirty player. It was an unfortunate play. I can't you know what I mean? But Devin White's one. not a dirty player. Yeah, I agree. Um, so outside the penalties, which obviously you want to clean up. You, don't, you can't have 11 penalties and expect to win a divisional game. The turnovers. Tom Brady had three giveaways uh, in that mm-hmm. game. The fumble, the two interceptions, you know, and, and you know, miscommunications happen, all that stuff. Got it. But Tom Brady, you know, you can't you can't look at your quarterback and say you're the the single point of failure for our team either. But you also can't be the torpedo for the team. You know what I mean? Right. Especially in a, in a situation like this. So I look for Tom Brady to come in with more resolve. And unlike some of the younger players on the Buccaneers roster, Tom Brady's history says that when he gets frustrated or has a get right game, a get back game, he usually does it and he does it pretty well. Yeah. I'm waiting on it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true. It's true. Like Tom Brady has to be the one, right? Because you've got yeah. 
a 61.9% completion percentage in his four games against the Saints since he joined the since he joined the Bucks. That's not up to Tom Brady standard, right? right? Eight touchdowns to seven interceptions, sacked 10 times. They drop his adjusted net yards per average or excuse me per attempt by 2 yards when the Saints mm-hmm. defense gets gets their hands on Tom Brady. And so he's and that includes the playoff win, by the way. And so yeah. it's it's one of those things to where he he has to be sort of the 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 standard bearer if you will for a Tampa but if the Saints are able to rope him into some mistakes or at least take advantage of the mistakes that are made which is something that the Saints couldn't do a couple weeks ago against Buffalo for instance then that's where they have the ability to be able to you know come up and be a bit of a surprise this weekend yeah I mean when you look at the overall numbers the Saints are one of the lower teams in the NFL and sacking the opposing quarterback Mm -hmm. but I don't know man when you watch Saints play the Buccaneers you think that number would be a lot (laughs) maybe the Saints just need to put like a Buccaneers face on every single every single game. Yeah, they just play. make them wear Bucks jerseys every time yeah. every opponent that you play. Man. And even <laughs> yeah, I mean because they stand up even when they're not very good. You know, what I mean they they still stand up against this team. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, of course, thank you to to you Ross, of course, for joining me for dropping all that knowledge on the Saints and dropping some knowledge on the Buccaneers too. I mean, you, you're a very well read NFL analyst for a reason. Uh, thanks to everybody out there, whether you're listening to audio or watching on YouTube, for joining us, making your favorite Locked On podcast your first listen or your first watch every day. Of course, come back tomorrow. Ross will have another uh, breakdown, one more look at this contest before we hit the weekend. James, my co-host, and I over at Locked On Bucks will also be back, and we'll be giving our final predictions and making our score predictions. So if you want to come back and see if we do take that 10.5-point spread, you can do that. Now that you're done with this episode, make your second listen to Locked On Bets podcast, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q and expert with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms, just like Locked On Saints, just like Locked On Bucks. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind to one another. And thank you for joining us on Crossover Thursday at the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.